Can tell what is presbyopia. Good. So presbyopia is the physiological insufficiency of accommodation associated with the aging of the eye that results in progressively worsening ability to focus clearly on near objects. So uh, the thing to notice is that it is not a pathological disease. It is a physiological phenomena occurring with the aging of the eyeball and there is uh, insufficiency of the accommodation by which the person cannot focus on the near objects clearly. So how will the, pa the patient present to us? He can present with difficulty reading fine print eye strain when reading for long periods, blurring of near objects and temporarily blurred vision when changing the viewing distance. So if we look at this diagram, first uh, there's, this is a normal eye of a young patient in which the accommodation is intact. For, while focusing on the near target, uh, you can see that the ciliary body it uh, contracts, which causes the relaxation of the suspensory ligaments, which allow the lens, uh, the elasticity of the lens capsule, allowing it to, uh, uh, so that the shape of the lens, it becomes more globular. As a result, the refractive power of the eye increases and the object, it is focused onto the retina. However, in press myopic patients, because the accommodation is insufficient, uh, there is less elasticity of the capsule and uh, there is resistance to the change of the uh, lens. Therefore, the image of the near object, it is focused behind the retina. So in order for that image to be focused in front of the retina, we have to provide some correction in the form of convex lenses, which will increase the refractive power of the eye and the image will again be formed onto the retina. Okay, so what is accommodation? It is the ability of the eye to change its dioptic power in order to maintain a clear image or focus the object as its distance changes. Accommodation involves a triad of uh, three things, meiosis, convergence and uh, the thickening of the lens shape. If we look at this diagram, it is a comparison between an unaccommodated and an accommodated eye. The, in an accom unaccommodated eye, the pupil is dilated as compared and uh, there is tension in the uh, suspensory ligaments uh, due to which uh, the lens uh, maintains a less globular shape uh, as in focusing for the far objects. However, in near objects, the pupil, it has undergone meiosis due to the contraction of the ciliary muscle and there is relaxation of the suspensory ligaments which has allowed the lens to become more globular. So what is the age of onset? It usually is observed after 40 years of age. However, it will depend upon the pre-existence refractive error. Uh, in hypermetropes, the presbyopia will be achieved early while it will be delayed in myopes. And the depth of the focus, uh, which depends on the pupillary size and the patient's visual task. Those who indulge in uh, greater use of near vision, such as stitching and sewing, or uh, they have greater uh, use of IT and screen time, they will observe uh, that the change in near vision will occur earlier as compared to those who do not use near vision much in their daily routine lives. <clears throat> So here we have the average accommodative amplitudes for different ages. Uh, we can see that by the age of eight years, the uh, accommodative amplitude is about 14 diopters and it will decrease one diopter for each four years. And so that the, by the age of uh, 40, the accommodative amplitude is six diopters. And uh, after 40, it decreases more rapidly from age 48 on. Again, there is a decrease of 0.5 diopters for every four years. So for comfortable near visions, half of the available uh, accommodation, it must be kept in reserve. And uh, we'll provide the uh, correction, keeping in view that half of the accommodative amplitude will be used by the patient and the rest will be provided by the spectacle correction or the contact lenses. So what is accommodative insufficiency? It is the premature loss of accommodative amplitude and it may be due to a current or past debilitating illness or the use of medications such as parasympatholytics. 
permanent accommodative insufficiency it may be uh, associated with neurogenic disorders and the most common cause of premature presbyopia is latent hypermetropia because the accommodative reserve would be used by the patient in order to correct the hypermetropia uh, what is accommodative excess? It is caused by ciliary body spasm and the symptoms include headache, brow ache, blurring of distance vision and abnormally close near point. And it may be due to uncorrected refractive errors, for example, hypermetropia or astigmatism. And it may be due to a local eye uh, disease, iridocyclitis, which will cause spasm of the ciliary muscle and all the three uh, processes of accommodation, they will be heightened. Uh, then we have the accommodative convergence to the accommodation ratio. It is expressed as the prism diopters of deviation per diopter of accommodation and the normal value for this is 3 ratio 1 to 5 ratio 1. Uh, as we have discussed previously, in hypermetropes, the presbyopia will be developed early and they will require higher co correction in addition to the correction for their refractive error and then for the near correction as well. Whereas in myopes, they will develop rel uh, presbyopia relatively late and they will require lower cor uh, near correction. So how will we calculate the presbyope correction for a patient? The amount of presbyope correction for a patient is calculated using the accurate baseline refraction, as we have discussed the differences between myopes and hypermetropes, the amplitude of accommodation, as well as the desired working distance depending on the patient's occupational activities. So the baseline refraction we have discussed in the previous presentations, uh, now we'll see how can we calculate the amplitude of accommodation. So uh, the following test can be used to determine uh, there are three tests, the near point of accommodation with accurate distance refraction correction in place. The patient uh, distance correction is applied, uh, whatever it is, myope, hypermetrope. After uh, the corrected refraction, the uh, near point of the patient is assessed by asking him to fixate on a an, uh, target and moving the target closer to the eye. And when that uh, object will become blur for the patient, that will be the near point of accommodation. Uh, we can calculate it using the accommodative rule. We have the Prince Loop rule and the RAF ruler. The use of plus and minus spheres at near distance until the fixation target blurs. We'll discuss all of these ahead. Similarly, as described, uh, the near point of accommodation, we'll simply uh, ask the patient to fixate on a target and uh, move the target closer to the eye of the patient. The point at which the target will become blur for the patient will be the near point of accommodation. Okay, so uh, it can also be uh, measured using the Prince rule or the RAF rule, the Royal Air Force rule. It can be used to measure the near point of accommodation as well as the near point of convergence. And uh, the amplitude is determined by subtracting the power for the far point as well as the uh, from the near point. So here we can see there are different displays. This uh, vertical line, this is used to determine uh, for the near point of convergence. And uh, the rest of these, any of these can be used to determine the near point of accommodation. We have this screen which can be changed all, any of these four can be used. We have a meter rod in which there are calibrations in centimeter and this box can be moved uh, onto this meter rod. Uh, and this is the handle from which the examiner will be holding it and this area is known as the wing and they are placed onto uh, below the eyes of the patient and the patient is asked to focus on the depending on the type of screen we are used and we can calculate the near point of accommodation as well as convergence with this. Okay, so the third method was measurement by spheres. The minus and plus, uh, plus lenses, they are placed in front of the eye of the patient and the accommodation is simulated or re relaxed respectively. So uh, suppose if the patient, uh, he is focusing uh, with a minus 3 diopter and uh, also uh, the blurring then occurs with plus 2.5 diopters. So the accommodative reserve will be 5.5 diopters. The difference between the plus and the minus spheres for which the near point of accommodation is achieved, that will give us the amplitude of accommodation. <laughs> Okay, selecting the ad power, the amount of accommodation required for patient near vision task, uh, task is determined, allowing one half to be held in reserve, as we have discussed previously. Uh, for example, if a patient has two diopter accommodation reserve and the accommodation required is 2.5 diopters, so half of the two diopters that will be kept in reserve. So uh, the patients uh, will be using one diopter uh, of his own accommodation and 1.5 diopter will be added to the patient's correction using the spectacle lenses or the contact lenses. 
so this is important that we have to ensure that half is kept in reserve if we won't do that then any slight change in the distance of the near object it will cause uh, problem and blurring for the patient if uh, no accommodation is kept in reserve okay so uh, usually presbyopia it is generally treated by using bifocal lenses uh, or trifocal multifocal and the contact lenses as, as well in today's presentation we'll only be discussing the bifocal lenses and the various types used and basically bifocal lenses they are used to minimize the inconvenience of patient of using two separate glasses for distance vision and the near vision as well okay so uh, generally um, bifocal lenses they uh, the larger part of the lens or uh, it is usually superiorly the major portion and it is providing for the distance correction and the near portion is usually the smaller part and it is located inferiorly and it is being provided for the uh, near correction uh, there are different types of bifocal lenses we have the split franklin bifocals the cemented bifocals fused bifocals and the solid or the flat bifocals the slit bifocals they were the earliest design of bifocal lenses and uh, as uh, we said that commonly the larger part is the distance here uh, they are equal parts for the distance and the near and uh, the flat bottom of the distance part abuts the flat top of the near lens this was the earliest design of the bifocal lenses which was used then we have the cemented bifocal this lens design is now almost obsolete here we have a distant uh, lens for distance correction and the reading edition it is cemented or attached to the distant lens using ultraviolet cured epoxy resin as an adhesive and um, the bifocal is almost very thin this reading correction which will be applied and the lens overlock overall appears that it is a single piece of lens but this design it is not uh, is has it has become obsolete now then we have the fused bifocals in this type the um, near portion it is fused uh, to a corresponding depression in the uh, glass of the distant vision and the near addition it depends on the refractive index of the glass type as we can see the uh, here for the crown blank the refractive index is less and this uh, flint button which is shown it has a greater refractive index so basically the near correction is being provided by the uh, higher refractive index for the near segment as compared to the lower for the distant segment Finally, we have the solid bifocals. Uh, here, the near addition is produced by a different curvature of either the front or back surface of this portion. So, uh, this, uh, um, in the previous uh, fused bifocals, we said that the near correction is the difference of the refractive index, whereas in the solid bifocals, the near correction is applied using the different curvature of the lenses used. So, that's all for today this has been prepared from l kington as well as the american academy of ophthalmology thank you uh, learning outcomes uh, and she has uh, nicely described the all the learning outcomes so uh, full marks for that um, now the technical word we use is esthnopia uh, because of the strain, uh, many patients, 50% of patients in our OPD come with the problem that they have eye stain. Especially the new generation, young lot who are doing most work on the laptops and on the mobiles. So I tell them that uh, near VN, near work is responsible for that. And this is basically fatigue of your ciliary muscle. I explained them that if you walk 5 kilometers and you have pain in the legs, it is not a disease. You, your body does not have that much stamina. So reduce the distance. Or if you want to walk 5 kilometers, then be prepared for that pain in the legs. You will have to take Panadol. But better to take a rest after 3 km and then do another 2 km. So basically the asthenopia is because of the continuous near work. If a patient do the sort of sewing, stitching or dal chunte hain or chawal me se patthar nikalte hain a person who is reciting the holy quran 
or a person movie watching movies on the mobile uh, all these activities put a similar burden on the near on the eye so that there is strain. fatigue stain and headache so to avoid i tell them after half an hour near work then you look at a distance through the window outside and just relax then you can do so i tell them that the fatigue is not a disease it is a cry of your body that uh, your body says is hands up okay no more near work this is lack of your stamina so this is very much physiological this is not pathological so change your routine so this is see about uh five out of my 10 private patients they complain of pain in the eyes headache and uh, they are doing excessive near work so this is one now uh, the ladies who present this problem have a uh, special uh, sort of mention you see a patient will come that i am a patient will say that i am 35 year old and the patient is having press biopic symptom so what is the cause one option or one cause may be latent hypermetropia so i will see the cyclo uh, the refraction and if i still doubt i will do a cycloplegic refraction but in most of the cases the ladies do not tell their exact age so she will be telling 35 and she will be 45 so and i will see that on autograph there is no hypermetropia but still she can't focus here she is placing here so i come to know the exact age the age of the lady so this is one but uh, always rule out latent hypermetropia see if the symptoms are severe the best thing is to do a cycloplegic refraction and that reveals the total amount of hypermetropia only refraction will not reveal the exact amount of hypermetropia because how much has been covered by the ciliary tone you don't know okay so uh, in this regard avoid overcorrection if a patient says that i see well here and i can't see here it means he or she has been overcorrected so the patient should be able to focus at 1 and 1/2 foot and the focus should be comfortable even at a distance of 2 feet so this range if the patient is comfortable it means the correction is okay now you have shown the royal air force uh, the instrument raf rule how to differentiate between the convergence insufficiency and accommodation insufficiency Good. So, in RAF rule, when the line comes closer, either the patient will say that there is diplopia, convergence fails, or the eyes will move apart. This means this is the near point of convergence, and near point of accommodation is when the the print becomes blurred. so uh, this is fine point between the two you have described the bifocal lenses but there is another variety which is called progressive lenses or varilex ah uh, uh, they are a little bit costly uh, uh, i think uh, a few years back somebody told me there 7000 they charge for progressive so there is no boundary between the far correction and the near correction the power of the lens gradually increases from the center below corridor effect, corridor effect are so it takes 2 3 weeks uh, for the patient to become used to it but this is another option then uh, concentrating on the other options other than the glasses are the best option for the press biopia but there are few corneal procedures which we can do in one eye so that the patient is comfortable for uh, near vision any procedure which has been done in uh, one is mono vision if we do the uh, cataract surgery we make the eye perfect for far vision in one eye 
and for the near vein in another eye. But the other procedure is corneal procedure, thermoplasty. So this is another option being exercised in some way. But you see the now the emerging market is corneal uh, lens exchange. This is called refractive lens surgery or clear lens extraction. Clear lens extraction is called CLE. Refractive lens surgery is called RLS. So now uh, a patient came to me from England. She rang me up and then she came. Uh, uh, my friend has uh, uh, done this multifocal IOL for her in Turkey. So I, I am from Pakistan, so I have come to Pakistan. So a lot of patients are being operated with multifocal IOLs or the trifocal IOLs in this press biopic age to crack the press biopia. See, after 45 years of age, the lens has lost most of its accommodative ability. So it can safely be reduced. I told her that there are a lot of side effects of the uh, operation. And so I, I did not encourage her. But this is a big market. As we make the cataract surgery more safe, this option will be exercised more. So this is uh, any other comment? Hey, what is jump? Jump <laughs> Because of the change in refractive power of the distress and there is and there is positive increase in magnification. So, patients that do the the exam, the image is displaced. That is image jump. For this image jump, to avoid the multifocal, trifocal, very focal like this, and they are being introduced. So, avoid that jump. Image jump. जो बाइफोकल है इसमें हाउ टू बहुत सारे पेशेंट्स आते हैं कि नहीं इंटॉलरेंस होती है उनको दे कैन नॉट वेयर इट तो किस तरह से आप उसको ओवरकम करें बाइफोकल एडवाइस किया आपने और बहुत सारी خواتین आती हैं कि यार हमें यूज इट रेगुलरली मुश्किल होती है चीजें दूर होती है लेकिन बट उन लोगों के लिए तो ठीक है जिन लोगों के लिए दिन में एक दफा कुरान पढ़ना या कोई ऐसा काम करना है आधे घंटे के लिए अदरवाइज जो बाकी लोग हैं जो उनको ऑल द टाइम दे कैन नॉट चेंज कि कभी एक उतारे दूसरा लगाएं दूसरा लगाएं तो उसके लिए फिर ये वाइफ फोकल और वाइफ फोकल है उसमें प्रॉब्लम यही आती है कि एक पेशेंट को थोड़ा सा लर्न करना पड़ता है स्पेशली प्रॉब्लम होती है जब वाइल्ड देयर स्टेयर्स से नीचे आ रहे होते हैं उस वक्त प्रॉब्लम होती है क्योंकि नियर का जो है वो डिस्टेंस वो आपका देखिए दैट इज अराउंड 33 सेंटीमीटर उससे बियॉन्ड एवरीथिंग इज ब्लर्ड तो जब वो नीचे सी उससे से देखते हैं देन दे फाइंड इट डिफिकल्ट सो आस्क देम टू मूव देयर फेस अहेड अलोंग विद सो दैट उनकी गेज जो है डिस्टेंस के लिए इट इज फ्रॉम द फार डिस्टेंस जो ऊपर वाला है उसके लिए वंस दे लर्न टू लिव विद इट तो दे गेट यूज्ड टू इट लेकिन शुरू में थोड़ी सी डिफिकल्टी होती है तो यू हैव टू ट्रेन देम दैट इट विल बी कम देयर विल बी डिफिकल्टी बट लेटर ऑन इफ यू लर्न एंड दैट विल बी कवर्ड ऑफ टू सी व्हेनेवर यू गिव प्रेस बायोपिक करेक्शन यू आस्क द पेशेंट फॉर व्हिच एक्टिविटी यू वांट द नियर ग्लासेस यू सी अ फ्यू पर्संस आर इंटरेस्टेड इन बुक रीडिंग द रिटायर्ड पीपल दे वांट द फोकस टू बी हियर See, and most of the people are uh, interested in um, near work with a computer or laptop. So they will be placing here. So we want to make the patient comfortable at the distance where he or she wants it. So this is very important. The you tell the I always tell the patient. You see, there is no glass which can work at one foot and at two feet. So you have to select, or you want to have an in between uh, correction. 
so that uh, you can uh, place the near uh, work at one and a half foot. See, uh, discussing this with the patient is necessary. Otherwise, uh, you correct it for one feet and the, uh, the patient comes after uh, one week that I cannot read the print at the computer. Right. So, the best thing is that the patient should be told that, okay, we will make you comfortable from this distance to this distance. And you bring your all the work in this range of near work. So, in between. But if a person, Ziaulak had three glasses, one for Farvian, one for reading uh, at this distance, and one for when you stand on the podium, you have to pay, place the print. So, if anybody is interested for uh, this sort of correction, you can offer, okay, we can have uh, my uh, brother is a pilot. He says that I have to uh, read the checklist of the panel and the panels are here. So, I said you take one glasses and keep it in the aircraft to see the panel. So, if a person is interested, you can offer three glasses. One for near, one for intermediate and one for distance. So, the, so as I have told you, I have uh, implanted many multifocal intraocular lenses and the patients are very happy because I tell them that there is no need for near vein glasses. So, uh, there are different options now available with different companies. Some companies have different plus ad. And uh, let's say Zeiss has a fixed ad, but it's a trifocal. And uh, pan optics is another option. Uh, then enhanced depth of uh, ED of uh, focus. focus. So, this is another so previously there were only two designs of multifocal lenses. Uh, what were these? Diffractive and so there were two. See one point more. In accommodation, the how the lens changes in shape. The changes occur at the anterior surface or posterior surface? Anterior. So, the posterior surface remains the same. It is the anterior surface which bulges. I have remembered 6 and 10. So, the thickness of the lens increases due to bulging forward of anterior capsule so that it becomes thicker and the radius of curvature increases or decreases? Increases. Radius of curvature decreases. You see, when a lens becomes more globular, the radius of curvature becomes smaller. If the radius of curvature is more, the curve will be less. So, remember, this is also true for cornea, which happens in keratoconus. The more curved the cornea, the radius of curve decreases. Right? So, and what? any comment? Okay, thank you very much.